So you guys probably saw Book of Heroes came out, a little adventure with Jaina, fair bit of drama across Hearthstone community. We're not going to get into that. Instead, I wanted to take a closer look at a bunch of the cards from the adventure and sort of talk about them in the context of what if they were real? What would they look like? Would they be the same? Would we have to nerf them? So on and so forth, because there were some cool iconic characters, some pretty crazy ideas. Now, to clarify, I'm not going to talk about cards like these, which are basically just reskins of cards we already know. That's Aldor Attendant, Fireball, and Emperor Thorison, just renamed and reskinned. There's probably a bigger discussion about whether Hearthstone should reskin cards in the future. I'd say probably not. So, that said, let's go ahead and kick it off uh, with a cool reference here to Bigglesworth the cat. This is assistant Bigglesworth. This is in uh, one of the opponent's deck in the adventure mode. It's a four mana two, three, discover a copy of a minion in your opponent's deck. That's not a very good card. We've seen effects like cloning device before, a one mana spell. Attaching a two, three body to that does not make it very exciting for four mana. So I don't think this would be a good fit in constructed. Certainly not as a legendary style card how could we tweak that to make it feel a little bit more interesting and perhaps more powerful while retaining the spirit of the card well what about this idea instead of just discovering the copy of a minion you're actually going to discover that minion in your opponent's deck and then transform it into a 1-1 cat because presumably this assistant bigglesworth is the cat for kelthazad in the future and maybe things went a little wry with his magic where he's turning stuff into cats, and he accidentally turned himself into a cat, or maybe Keldazad punished him by using his own sorts of magic against him, turning him into a cat, that uh, adjusted polymorph-style effect. And this would be a really cool card that's all about disrupting your opponent's resources and combos and taking really powerful cards out of play for them. We've seen some disruption-style effects like that in the four, but they're generally way more random. They don't have quite as much control as a Discover would, which is really nice. So would this still be an amazing card? Probably not. A lot of these disruption effects just don't pan out for decks. You're often better off doing your own thing as opposed to trying to mess with your opponent's game plan. But it would be pretty fun. It would tell the story of Bigglesworth in an interesting, different kind of way. And I could envision some disruption decks here and there running something like this one. So moving on, let's take a look at Chandra's Feathermoon here. This is a pretty crazy strong card uh, that you get in one of the fights in Book of Heroes for Jaina. It's a 7-mana 5-6 for Hunter with Stealth and a really strong battle cry. Destroy your opponent's left and right most minions. That's very reminiscent of Crushing Walls from the past. That wasn't a particularly strong or played card, but clearly when you attach that effect to a Stealth 5-6, it becomes much, much stronger. And I think that would be too strong. So what if we move the to a 4-3 instead of a 5-6? Suddenly, it's way less pressure on board. It's also perhaps a lot easier for your opponent to deal with. They just cast a Hellfire, and suddenly Chandra's Feather Moon is dead, as opposed to that 6 health total, which is really awkward to deal with when it's stealth. That's going to be tough for a lot of decks to answer effectively with generic AoEs, but suddenly in the world of Flame Strikes and Hellfires, Chandra's is a little bit easier to tidy up, while still presenting a really strong swing potential on board, whether that's one minion or multiples. And I like the aggressively uh, statted... Uh, allocation here of four attack versus three health as opposed to the more defensive five six because that's just kind of what hunter's all about right going face so i think this would bring the card into a healthier spot now the, i i th still think this would be a pretty strong card for the record uh we see other you know swing style cards like this that hit one minion that don't have stealth in that five to six mana range think about like vile spine slayer maybe keladan the breaker so this is good in that vein at seven mana the stealth makes it good for hunter in particular it's destroying multiple things more consistently than perhaps say Keladan. So I think this would be a good spot for the card and would be a pretty cool asset for Hunter to have. Moving on to the Staff of Antonitis, a pretty OP weapon in the adventure. It uh, is a seven mana zero three. It's basically Antonitis. Whenever you cast a spell, you get a fireball to your hand. But the thing is, it's a weapon, so it stays equipped forever, basically. It never just dies on board like Antonitis does. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, that's kind of even worse than Antonitis if they have weapon removal. You're right, if, but if they don't have weapon removal, it's just there forever, unlike Antonitis, where there's a lot more ways to deal with minions, whereas weapon removal is a very specific tech kind of card. 
So I think you got to make the Staff of Antonitis less impactful, certainly because of its ability to stick around forever in certain matchups. You don't want a meta where everybody has to run weapon removal. We're already getting close to that right now. So what if we just made it Pyroblasts instead of Fireballs? <laughs> you might say, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. Fireblasts are way scarier than Fireballs, sort of, but they aren't as susceptible to discounts. They aren't as flexible. You're committing your entire turn. So yes, you could put like three Pyroblasts in your hand and that's scary. That wouldn't be hard to do necessarily over multiple turns with this staff of Antonitis, but you're not gonna have time to cast those, right? Like spending that much mana is gonna be really, really tough because you're gonna have to lock down boards, spend mana on other stuff. So it just kind of shifts this card into like meme combo, almost alternate win condition territory, as opposed to like this thing's really scary and could totally dictate the course of a game, which is a much healthier place for a card like this. And uh, when you're putting it at 10 mana, you get 10 mana Power Blast. There's a lot of flavor there as well. Shifting Antonitis into a new direction, I think, as opposed to just sort of copying the card, which feels better too. So next up is Archmage Kallic, which is really sort of a uh, humanoid scaled down version of Calicos that we know in Mage already. He has the same, your first spell costs zero. Instead of discovering a card, he's drawing one from your deck, which I would argue is better in some ways worse than others, but often if you wanted to play really big spells in your deck, consistently you could draw them and hit them for zero mana on turn five. That would be completely broken in normal Hearthstone as you might expect when you cut a card in half with the same effect, it gets really, really strong. So I think you have to shift it in some way or another to make it balanced. And I got an idea here for Calic, which is kind of borrowing from um, Dusk Fallen Aviana. You might say, wait a minute, Aviana is like one of the worst cards ever. How is that balanced? Well, with Calic, it would be both players first spell each turn cost zero. Aviana was any card. So when you played Aviana, she was your first card played and she consumed the discount already. So you had to wait for a future turn to utilize Aviana. With Calic, you could play it and still cheat out a really big spell. You could cast that puzzle box or power of creation and get the extra four six and the extra card draw alongside it, which would be a really high tempo play. Now, the downside is of course, your opponent could potentially do something really cool too. They get to cast Survival of the Fittest suddenly and you're completely owned. So there's a little bit of risk here to balance out the payoff for this cheaper Archmage Calic. And that's what I like a lot because if the deck only has a backstab, they're not gonna realize much value. You're gonna gain a huge advantage. If they have big spells, it starts to neutralize itself. Now there is one potential, I think, risk with this, which is Conjurer's Calling. You could play Calic and then Conjurers it and get a couple big five drops on board where your opponent doesn't get to use the discount. Uh, so then you get to draw a card and summon a board. That's a little bit problematic potentially, but honestly summoning like two five drops at five mana, that's just kind of Jandis bear off these days. So I don't even know if random five drops would be all that significantly more powerful. So I'm not even that crazy worried about that. Now, you know, you could do other things, make this six mana, change the cost discount, how it works. There's other ways to balance this, but this one seemed to capture the, the flavor still of Calico's remained very reminiscent to the version we saw in the adventure, but just tweak things to feel a little closer to reality. Moving on here to the gray cat. This is sort of a reskin of black cat we saw in the Witchwood, but it's also removed the odd condition that black cat had. For that one, you had to have an odd only deck, a Baku deck, essentially. This one just works by default. And I thought about ways to tweak this one, but you know what? I sort of decided I kind of think it's okay. Like, yes, it would be a very powerful constructed card, but I don't think it's out of the realm of reason these days. We have a lot of really powerful constructed cards. I think this could be printed today and we probably wouldn't bat too big of an eye at it. We'd be like, okay, yeah, it's strong, but it doesn't feel crazy to me. Yes, it's certainly power crept over other cards we've seen, but you know what? That's how Hearthstone works these days. So Grey Cat, I think is almost printable. Maybe make it a three, two to be safe, but as it stands, I could see this card in Hearthstone. I wouldn't necessarily welcome it or love it, but I think it's fairly possible this could be a real card someday. Moving on to the Theramore Guard here. Uh, this one's using artwork from Stormwind Champion, but a totally new design, three mana, three, one charge. Death Rattle Teal, do damage to your hero. So that's just strictly worse than Wolf Rider, which is a little bit odd. Um, they didn't want this card to be super strong in the adventure, obviously, so they just made it worse than Wolf Rider because that's damage to your hero, not your opponent, 
opponent's hero, so it's a downside. You're taking the damage. Uh, so I thought, well, we could balance this card out a little bit by upping the attack value of it to make it better than Wolf Rider, but then you do need a pretty significant downside because clearly Hearthstone's scared of charge minions. They don't like big charge minions floating around. So what if we did make a three mana four one charge? Uh, would that be OP? I don't know, maybe. Like it's scary, of course, to give charge minions any any extra upside, but that's a really big downside with a deal five to your own heroes. So you're taking a big risk when you play this. And I know one of the best ways to beat face decks is just counter pressure them, like start to stabilize in the mid game, develop a big board, and then you just smack them in the face and they die before they kill you. Cards like this would really help you on that counter pressure plan where it's like, they're gonna take five when I ping this thing. So we're gonna race. So I think it would be okay-ish. I think it'd be fine. Probably people would still prefer Wolf Rider in a lot of ways, but um, it would be a good card. I think aggro decks would like to run a four damage charge for three mana, particularly if it was in the basic set like this one appears to be. I also just tweaked the artwork on this one. I don't think that's technically a Theramore guard art, but uh, you know, just using the same artwork felt kind of bad. So change in the artwork and maybe this looks like a fairly realistic card. And then finally we have the Focusing Iris. This is a crazy weapon in the adventure. You play this, you get a giant board of water elementals, you get some spell damage permanently to boot. It's pretty nice. Permanently minus weapon removal, we get it guys, we know. Uh, but that's clearly way, way, way too strong. That would just be a non-conditional giant board builder with some spell damage upside that's really, really good for eight mana. So I wanted to delay it a little bit, create some friction, and with this version of Focusing Iris, it would be a death rattle instead of a battle cry. So your opponent and you kind of have this dilemma where you say like, okay, I've got this spell damage upside I'm equipping fairly permanently uh, because I want to have spell damage shenanigans, right? And if my opponent decides to remove that spell damage, then boom, I get a board of water elemental. So you're punishing your opponent basically for removing your weapon. Now I thought, oh man, you know, you could probably make this a lot cheaper just because it's like, yeah, that doesn't feel good. You know, permanent spell damage for eight mana is still a pretty high cost. Like that feels like it could be five mana or something or even cheaper for just the spell damage aspect. So it's kind of hard to balance this one across that death rattle. But I realized there's fear of sapience now. So you can't make it too cheap or are you just gonna like get, you know, a super, super early board full of water elementals. So Sphere of Sapiens kind of keeps this in check a little bit because you could overwrite your own weapon pretty easily in Mage. Not to mention random generation effects and stuff that could also give you weapons on occasion. So it has to be a fairly high mana cost. I don't know if eight's the right number, maybe it's still six or seven or something, but uh, you need to have a cost on summoning a giant full board of awesome minions. So eight felt fine. And of course it holds true to the original version of Focusing Iris we saw in the expansion. There's one last card here I wanted to touch on, which was Tyrande Whisperwind, which shows up, along with, there's a Malfurion card as well on board that both have the Night Elf tag. And although these don't look like real Hearthstone cards, because of course I don't think we'd see a hero uh, portrait with the same art necessarily, I could get a version of Tyrande someday, I'm sure, but not this simple. Uh, I did want to discuss the Night Elf tag specifically. This was already confirmed on Twitter by Blizzard devs that this is not like a hint that Night Elves are coming. This is leftover code from way back in the early days of Hearthstone. They apparently did have all of the different Warcraft races tagged as minion types, so orcs and humans and dwarves and all that stuff. Uh, Night Elf among them. So we're just seeing that show up in the game. They even called it a bug as a sort of unintentional consequence of these minions arriving. So... Basically, don't read too much into Night Elves. Don't make a big deal out of Night Elves. Uh, they did say they might add more minion types in the future. There were no plans, but Night Elf is not one of them at the moment, and this is not a hint of anything more, which I thought we'd just discuss real quickly. That said, I think that wraps it up for the cards uh, that are like new in the adventure, unless I missed one. So what do you guys think? Would you like to see some of these designs in Hearthstone someday? Uh, did these feel way too powerful? Most of you, I think, are gonna say they're probably still too strong, but I don't know, Hearthstone's really powerful these days. All these cards are good, so I wanted them to be strong, but certainly share your thoughts. This is just me goofing around, trying out some ideas and designs and playing off of the cool stuff we saw to see if it could be real. So it's all about fun here, nothing at stake really. So of course, share your thoughts, your takes in the comments below. Thanks much as always for watching. Um, if you wanna subscribe or whatever, that's cool, I guess. Just mostly want you guys to watch the videos, but uh, thank you. And until next time, game on.